Yeah, let me just hit record. Let's just do the damn thing. Do the don't, don't, do the don't, don't. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <sighs> deep breath in, deep breath out. <sighs> Welcome back to the Heine House Gaming and Tech Podcast. Hey, guess what? Before we start the new show, listen to this. Welcome to the Heine House Gaming and Tech Podcast, a talk show centered around retro and modern gaming and technology. The Heine House Gaming and Tech Podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. Dixie Cup. To watch the video feed from this episode or join the community Discord, get in there. Visit HeineHouse.com, you crazy people. Da da da. Yeah, hey baby, what's up? That's right, hey baby, what's up? That's right, hey baby, what's up? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Honey House Gaming and Tech Podcast. I'm your good friend, Jason Heine, checking in with you. And this is January 10th, 2021. Um, yeah, this is the Gaming and Tech Podcast, except for this episode. <laughs> this is going to be, not that it's going to be anything but, but this is the special episode. I do these at the end of every single year. It's kind of become tradition. It really wasn't. It wasn't intended to be a tradition, but it's kind of become a tradition because you, the listeners, have been, uh, a few of you anyway, have written to me and said, hey, man, you're going to do your end of the year. I really like those episodes. Yes, I was planning on absolutely doing the end of the year episodes, and I'm happy that you decided to write in and tell me that, and I'm, I appreciate you listening. So uh, w- once again, we've we've completed 2020, and what a year it's been. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a doozy, right? I mean, there's no, there's no denying it. Now, you may be thinking, oh my gosh, I don't want to just like relive the entire year. Neither do I. So don't think I'm going to sit here and just recap CNN's top 10 shittiest events that happened in 2020. It's not going to happen. What I'm doing on this episode is what, I'm, what I've done on the other ones. Um, I'm going to talk about the year and how it relates to me and what I've had happen and, and my thoughts and my views and my opinions. And I'm going to just talk about how it kind of relates to what has happened to me in my life. And it's kind of a fireside chat. We just are kind of hanging out talking about stuff. And I originally thought nobody would really give two shits about it, to be honest. Um, but I found out that a lot of people actually enjoy it. And they kind of enjoy that more uh, wholesome, honest, like humanized version of me. So I am very happy to share that. And I've even taken it a step further. I want to mention this before we even jump into the show. Um when I did my, and I've mentioned this many, many times, uh, when I did my 10-year recap episode, uh, recapping the last 10 years of my life, 2010 to 2020, that episode has, has been very, very popular. In fact, it's it's one of the most popular episodes on uh, the podcast, to be honest, um, and even on YouTube. And again, people like this honest, natural, down-to-earth, just look at life and hear other stories and hear where people have come from and, and and how things have transpired and what has made you, you. I think that's why people like documentaries so much is that, you know, they're an inside look into things. So I'm taking that a step further. Big shout out to my friend, Brandon BZ, my man. He came to me and said, you know what? We need to do an episode where we just talk about your life, man. We need to go deep into it and talk about it. Your upbringing, like how you got into music and drumming, like your family life, your brothers, like where you're from, like what happened when you moved to Arizona, like how starting YouTube, like getting into it, you know, like podcasts, all sorts of or all sorts of stuff. So we sat down and we recorded an episode. Now this was May, May or April of 2020. This is right when when the pandemic kind of started and right when uh, we all kind of went into lockdown. So a lot has happened since then, of course, but we recorded about a three-hour episode of talking about this sort of thing. And I am currently, it's taken me months to do this. Um, I'm editing it, but also I'm adding footage about my life. So I'm basically, I guess it's kind of like a documentary, autobiography. It's going to be the most in-depth thing to exist about my life. I've never, ever, ever done anything like this before. I talked to my my parents and I asked them if they were comfortable with me sharing some of the footage, um, you know, and they're totally cool with it. And the thing is, is that they jumped into action and pulled out all of their analog hi eight and digital eight tapes and they're helping me find footage and archive footage. And I've been working on this project for a long time, but it's going to actually have real footage from the 80s and 90s and 2000s of the stories that I'm talking about. It's really, 
it's really the most complete thing to exist that I've ever done as far as like about my life. And I, I've never really jumped into this or talked about this. So this is really exciting for me. I want to, I'm excited for this because this is really the most ambitious project uh, personally for me. Um, it's probably going to be about three or so hours. It's going to be a long, long one. And I understand not everyone would be interested in that. Totally fine. Uh, but if you are and you're, you like documentaries or you like autobiographies or you like uh, watching something that goes really in depth about other people's lives or, you know, just about them. And you find any interest in me whatsoever, you should watch it. It's really cool because I much love and respect to my father who literally filmed our entire upbringing or childhood, early days, Christmases, parties, New Year's, uh, you name it. And then into when I was drumming in school and high school and games and all sorts of stuff. And then into the 2000s when I was doing things, then I grabbed the camera and was filming. I literally have hundreds of tapes of my childhood. Now, most people don't have this stuff, which is really interesting. I see people searching for it a lot on YouTube, like 90s home videos or like 80s home videos. It's almost like this, it's not like this magical time, but it's a time where um, we didn't have these. All right? We didn't have our, we didn't have our smartphones. And the the big the biggest camera we had was this. You see this? This this was the camera from the late 80s, early 90s, right? This is what it was like. And you recorded on VHS tapes and stuff like that. And then it got smaller, right? Sony came out with smaller and Hitachi did too and, uh, and Canon and a bunch of other manufacturers. But the reality is, is that it's this magical time where most people weren't documenting vlog style their lives. That's exactly what my dad was doing back in the day. Literally vlog style before vlog was even a thing. So I, I feel like it's a service. I feel like it's, I would, I would do a disservice if I did not bring this footage out and show it. I have the technology to do it. It's right in front of my face. I have the computers. I have the cables. I have backup cameras. I have recorders and players that I've purchased. I can play this stuff, get it in the digital domain, archive it, save it, and also use it. That's what I'm doing. I know I've been long winded on this, but I just wanted to let you guys know that this is like one of the most important things for me personally, I'm really, I feel like I'm doing it for myself. If you find any interest in it, please just watch it. I would love for you to watch it. And if you don't, I respect you still, please. It's all good. Like I understand who, like who gives a shit about me, but you're listening to the show and I think you have a slight interest in what I'm doing in my life. So I hope you uh, watch it. It will probably come out from me recording this probably in the next couple of months. I'm probably another month or so out from, um, from, from watching it. Maybe we'll do a, a watch party too. Maybe I'll like stream it live and on YouTube. So be on the lookout for it there. Okay. Very, very cool. A lot of great stuff to talk about. Um, a lot of not great stuff to talk about in this episode, but a lot of, a lot of stuff. What I want to do is I want to try to take a look back and realize where we came from, but also show respect to it and realize, Hey, we're, we're here. All right. We're going to move forward. This has been a rough year. A lot of people have lost loved ones this year. Uh, a lot of people have gone through the worst, their worst times. They've lost jobs and homes and, and, and loved ones and, and really uprooted and changed their entire lives uh, overnight almost. And we have lived through difficult times in the past and we just lived through one of the most difficult times this year in 2020 and we will continue to live through difficult times like this. That's the harsh reality and truth because I'm a realist and that's just reality. It's going to happen again. Stuff like this is going to happen. It will come in a different form and it will be just as bad or equally bad or just slightly less bad or more bad. And that's just the way it is. And we have to come together. We have to stand together. We have to work together to, um, to lift each other up and support each other and figure out a way to move forward as best that we can within all of our means. And like I've said before, I'm just this random dude just flapping his mouth in front of a camera, recording on the computer, and then putting it online. And I feel like I don't really have a lot of significance when it comes to um, change, changing uh, the world as a whole. But I can share my outlook and my positivity and my love and respect to you all that are listening uh, and all of you that take part and whatever this crazy Heine House stuff is that we do over here and let you know that I love you and I appreciate you and I got your back. And if you ever need anything, I am always 
This is one thing that I pride myself in. You will not find this very often in the communities. And maybe this is my biggest flaw because uh, no one else seems to do it. So maybe it's a problem, but I find it to be not a problem at all. I, in fact, love it. I'm here for you. And I'm always just a click or a keyboard type away. It's that simple. You can write to me. Yep. You can get to me uh, if you want to talk. You want to just have a friend to chat with. Write to me on Discord. That's probably the best and easiest way to get a hold of me quickly on Discord. You can also write to me on whatever social media platform you use. I use Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. You can use those as well. But I definitely encourage a Discord as that is really just a, a real-time one-to-one chat um, for, for us there. And all the links to these are on my website. You can always get to them there. It's in the show notes as well if you're listening and you can scroll down in the show notes. I have links for everything. Just click it, boom, pops it up. I, I want to I put that out there. And I say it every episode, right? I, I push these because... It's very important. It's very important that we remain connected and, and that you know that there's uh, a place for you to go if you need to go somewhere. You know what I mean? So so there it is. Um, so thank you. This show, and then I'm segueing into Patreon because this show would not even be possible without the immense support from all the people you see right here on your screen. And I want to send a sincere and genuine thank you. And I appreciate you to everyone. Um across Patreon. Brandon, George, Aaron, Justin, Steve, Rusty, Duke, Andrew, Chris, Tim, Tyler, Sammy, Clive, Chad, Alice, Ryan, Cameron, Percy, Chris, James, Boost, Mike, D-Pud, Mr. Pete Dorr, Buried on Mars, Grant, Cliff, James. I want to thank all of you and also thank all of the, uh, the patrons that had to pull their pledges this year because of uh, hard times. I get it. Thank you for being here for as long as you can and supporting. I appreciate you. You all know we always have conversations on Patreon and talk about stuff. And I know people have gone through hard hardships this year. Um, I see you. I see you. And I appreciate you. Y'all are amazing. Thanks to all of the current past patrons. Thank you. Because I just love doing this show. And reality is that, you know, it takes money to do it. And... I hate that it's that way, but that's just the way it is. And your pledges go directly to the business here to take care of the show and keep it running. They pay for the hosting. They pay for my Podbean hosting. They pay for uh, website hosting. And they go directly into the show. Every year they do. And it's it's fantastic. And it's needed. It's needed. So thank you. Um, if you find any value in anything that I'm doing, uh, please consider joining there. That's the best way to show support. Um, can we jump? I have lots of notes. All right. We're going to basically go through month by month and break it down. I'm going to talk about stuff that's been going on in the months and kind of what I was doing in 2020 throughout the months and how things had, you know, what happened, what changed, what transpired and how it affected me and what I did and what my thinking was. And, and I think this is a great kind of, uh, you know, I mean, it's a great recap. It's a great recap of, of the year. It's a great way to look at it in a timeline sort of way. And for us to take a look back, see what happened, and then also how to prepare ourselves for the future as much as we can anyway um, with a with a move forward. So let's talk about some stories because this is what I love to do is talk about some stories and things that's going on. I literally spent about two and a half, uh, about the better part of two weeks putting these notes together um, in a timeline. It's too much for me to just remember off the top of my head, right? So you're going to see me look down and reference my iPad here for my notes because it's just, there's so much. I really wouldn't be able to do it off the top of my head. I went back and I used a couple of things. And if there's anything that Facebook is good for, um, it's the the timeline. And you basically, you can look, and I post everything there as well across social media. You can literally look at your timeline day to day and see exa exactly what you posted and what was going on. So that was really helpful. Also, Google A captures all of our data. So I looked at Google. I looked at my drives. I looked at everything that was going on and uh, saw that as well. So I kind of A-B'd the two. And then going off of my crazy memory to, uh, to to bring this timeline together. So let's start January 2020. Um, it started off actually really great. We we, we had the New Year's, uh, a real low-key New Year's. That's what we've been doing recently, Steph and I having kind of low-key New Year's. But it was great. We had, had a great New Year's and we started out 2020 strong. Um, I had just released Couple Skate in November. Um, I moved it. It's somewhere else now. I had I, I kind of rearranged this a little bit, some stuff behind me. Um, 
I just released Couple Skate in November, late November, and that album was doing very well, and I was really excited and happy, and I loved the sound of it. Uh, shout out to John, the homie John Show, coming through, throwing down some thick, stank bass, my man. Love you, brother. We're going to work on all kinds of stuff um, in the coming years, for sure. So I just released Couple Skate, doing really well with that. Fantastic. Felt really good and uh, positive and pumped about that album. Super proud of it. Uh, definitely check it out online if you haven't listened to it, or if you haven't listened to it in a while. Just go back to it. Um, January, I'm calling it the Sim Rig month because January I splurged and I said, you know what? Fuck this. I'm doing this. I have always wanted one. I, I grew up in the arcades. I love racing games and I have a little area in the corner I carved out for, for the Sim Rig. I'm fucking building one. And I did. I bought myself Next Level Racing uh, GT cockpit, which is the racing seat, the whole frame. Um, and then I bought the monitor stand. So I bought the, for the TV to go on. And I bought the I bought the uh, the keyboard stand, bought LED lights. I I upgraded the wheels. I bought the Thrustmaster T five hundred series. I bought the the uh, the triple pedal setup. Uh, I bought an extra shifter. I mean, like, dude, I went fucking ballistic on the sim rig in January. You can see this. It's all I uploaded them to YouTube. I kind of archived and documented my build throughout the process. I think there's three videos, maybe four. I think there's three videos of me and um, archiving this and putting this out there. I did the track IR, so I have the the IR uh, head tracking for um, for any games that use that, so I can look around in game like the Sim uh, American Truck Sim and a bunch of other games. I just I decided, you know, I'm splurging. I'm I'm doing it. I want to do it. It was a great time to do it. Um, everything was, you know, I didn't go crazy. I didn't spend like you know ten grand on the damn thing, but you know, it was it's an expensive setup. You know that I think people. No, when you look at it, and you'll you'll know what I'm using. If you go to Next Level Racing, you can look up the the sim rig, and um, the pedals and stuff like that, and set it up. and And you can build one for you know relatively affordable in that in that realm. This this realm is crazy. People spend thousands and thousands on this uh, hobby, and it's really fun to be honest. I love it. So I'm calling it the sim rig month. So also Taco Bell launched their nacho fries again. Oh my God, we had those. They were back, and in fact, they're back right now. It took pretty much here it is a year they did it a year later so every year around january it seems that they're going to start doing the nacho fries thing so get in line had those had the nacho fries bel grande baby they're amazing so good um the first stream of 2020 i went and looked back at my twitch as well um i did long tow trucking january 5th uh it was a holiday event that they were doing in game and uh one month later from that i would be trucking in the sim rig for the very first time I spent about a month, you know, researching, comparing options and prices for all of that sort of thing. And, and then I just decided on what I was going to do with the monitor and the next level racing and all that. And it was a really great, a really great purchase. I'm really proud of, uh, of the build and I'm happy to have it. And I love it. I don't use it nearly as enough. I need to use it more often. Uh, I did. I mean, I do when I play racing games. Yeah, man, I set it up and we stream it on Twitch. It's fun. You guys got to come check it out. Um, I continued to work the night shift. Uh, my schedule uh, on my like nine to five is what I'm calling it. Uh, I was also still podcasting, fitting that in streaming on the weekends and then entertainments on Friday and Saturday nights that I was doing. Um, we had four, I had four tens for a little bit and then that changed pretty quickly around this time, which sucked. Um, yeah. Well, I'm not going to get into all the drama of that shit, but they took away our four tens for no good reason. And it really fucked me up because I love having an extra day. Anyone who works night shift knows that you actually don't get that extra day off. It's not like a typical nine to five, like Monday through Friday, normal schedule. Like I work nine in the morning to five at night. You And then you have that night and then you have your two days and you go back in Monday morning. For night shift, it's different. Think about this for a second. It's different. You actually come home and then you have to sleep, right? You have to go to bed. You can stay at maybe three or four hours, but you have to go to sleep during the day and then get up at night. So on a weekend, like like today, like for instance, right now it's Sunday. I, I when I'm done with this, I have to go to sleep at like one or two p.m. and then sleep and go to work at night. So actually, this is my day off, but it's not a day off. I have to sleep. So that's what there's where the changes. So four tens. Most people who work at nights, the graveyard shift, do four tens because it gives you that extra day and it makes a lot of sense. I love it. Love it. Wish I could have it back, bruh. Wish I could have it back. Where's my bruh? <laughs> there she is. Um, so yeah, anyway, so my schedule changed and that makes things a little more difficult to be consistent. 
um, with with things because yeah, it's hard, man. It's definitely hard, but it's okay. It's okay. We're 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 just driving through. We're doing it. We're working hard, and we're making great stuff. So this is awesome. You know, I'm still thankful to have a job, and we're doing this sort of thing. February rolls around uh, after almost 21 years of being silent. Rage Against the Machine announces that they're doing a 2020 tour. Remember this? They announced it in February. I get in line for the queue. It's an absolute clusterfuck, as you can imagine. I'm trying to get tickets. I'm trying to buy two tickets for just two seats together. Um, didn't work. Couldn't get them. Uh, well, no, actually, I tried to get three because I wanted to get Steph, my friend John, uh, homie Chanch, and myself, all three together. But couldn't do it, so I tried two. Couldn't do it. Tried one. Was able to get one, and then I tried to get another one again, and I got another one, but it was they're on like opposite ends of the world. So I got two tickets to Rage, but they're apart but whatever we know we'll just make it work so i was like all right well that's all i have to do and then well we we know the future of that they actually postponed it you know because covid and stuff so uh but i was happy to see them coming back to do a tour like amazing stuff that's typically how it's gonna go right you're gonna have something that you've been wanting for a long time the band to reunite and then all of a sudden they have this pandemic comes through and shuts it all down <laughs> that sucks so yeah but uh, yeah, I don't even care that the seats aren't next to each other. I'm just happy to be able to go to the show. Um, but it's going to be probably a long time before that show happens, to be honest, at this point. They offered full refunds for people if they wanted them. I did not take the refund. I kept the tickets because I want to go to the show. Damn it. I want to go. Um, later on in February, I dug out my Newmark HDXs. Those are the turntables that I uh, bought in 2006, 2005. And I uh, was going to start doing my DJ streams again. was going to fire those up. And uh, yeah, yeah. After about three weeks of doing it, I ran into a few issues with my mixer, my effects channel, and one of my one of my left channel kind of cut out. I uh, was also having issues with the hard drives in there. They're hard drive-based turntables. So you load up your MP3s on a hard drive, put those hard drives, boom, right into the turntables, and then you can, you can mix and play off that. I was having issues with the old hard drives. You know, they're, you know, you know, 15 years old at this point. So I'm like, let's just replace them. I did some troubleshooting, replaced the hard drives. I had to order some custom hard drives from Florida because they're an old, old, old IDE um, attachment in there. They weren't SATA. So I wasn't going to start soldering and converting and all this crap. Anyway, it's this long, long winded drawn out thing that I, uh, I worked on during that month and got them to work again. And then slight, shortly after that, shortly after that, um, yeah, I just I was like, man, you know, this is this is not this is not working out because my mixer was kind of fucked up as well. And I was having issues and I go, man, I'm just I'm really needing to do something new here. I need a whole new system. I need to step into 2020 the right way. I need to get out of 2005 technology and step up. And uh, yeah, yeah, I did that. I did that. I decided on right at that time, I decided to purchase the dead on prime Four which is a, a, an all-in-one unit. It is a two-platter, four-channel mixer with effects, uh, has a large 10-inch touchscreen. It's amazing. If any of you come by and seen my DJ sets when I've been streaming around that time, uh, even post, I mean, I, I still do a few streams of, of music I own still to this day. Um, it's so great. So great. It's really a cool device. I absolutely love it. And it's so fun. And it's fun because I'm performing when I'm using it. I get to perform and do effects and mix. And I love it. It's great. So thanks to everyone who comes by the shows and watch those. So yeah, a really, really cool uh, purchase there as well. So as you can see in the early, in the early years, I, or early years, in the early in that year, I decided to do a couple of things for myself. I, for many years, I have not, I have not gone out and splurged and like treated, treat yourself treating myself to some of this stuff. And so I go, you know what? Fuck it. I'm doing it this year. I'm going to, I'm going to treat myself a few times and have, have fun doing it. So I did got a great new DJ set up and I was having fun doing my DJ streams. The sim rig was there. We were playing, having fun. And I was having a really great time. And that feels good. Cause you need to, you need to relax the mind and you need to, you know, relax your mind, let your conscience be free. You know, you know, rolling to the sounds of, okay. Yeah. We won't go into that, but you know what I mean? So it's great. It's great. I had a really great time using that. Um, on February 11th, Steph and I walked through Fry's Electronics in Phoenix for the very last time. Now, what's crazy is, you know, people still watching that video. I still get comments like probably one, maybe once, one or two a week on that video and people talking about 
Like, hey, I used to be an ex-employee at Fry's Electronics at this particular location. There, Everyone's giving their input insight, which is really cool to see. But that store is still standing. It's still standing. I, I, it's crazy. It's bare empty. But Fry's Electronics in Phoenix is still standing. I don't know. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know how they're surviving this long. We figured it would be our last walkthrough. So we filmed it as such. Check that video out on my YouTube. Um, on February 14th, I released my top 20 NES or Super Nintendo games video. It was something I worked on for about four weeks. It's actually a really great video. I thought it was awesome. The only thing I missed was like putting the game title in the lower thirds. I forgot to do that. Other than that, it's an amazing video. You should check it out. It took me a long time to work and do. Doing top 10, top 20 videos is a lot of work because I have to play and capture the footage for every game and then you know, write the script, make sure my my you know everything I'm saying is accurate. And anyone on YouTube who knows, and I've said this before in the past, if you want to find how thick your skin is or how thin it is, upload a top anything video to YouTube and watch your ass get handed to you by the comments. People literally tell me to kill myself when they don't see Metroid or Super Mario on the list. It's insane. It's insane. People are nuts. February 19th rolls around and a release date for the highly anticipated hotshot racing game is announced for August 13th. Super exciting. This is the first time I'd heard of it as well. They didn't even tell me officially when the release date was, but now we know August 13th coming, which is great. Um, and then on February 26th, it will go live on all platforms across the board worldwide. So I'm stoked. Hotshot racing. We've been working on it for five years. I wrote an amazing soundtrack for that game. I knew people would love it. I knew it would fit the game because I was playing the game. I was playing an early beta build. Many I've played many different beta builds of the game as it's been progressing. And I know, I was like, man, this is so great. It's so fitting. The music I made was deliberate. It was specific. It was a surgical strike on this game. I did it on purpose. And I'm just so thankful because we're going to fast forward down to when the game released in August. And I have it on here. We'll talk about it. But the, everyone has really, really loved it. And I'm so thankful. So thankful. Um, and then to round out that month, I continue to work the night shift as usual. Business as usual. March. Oh, boy. Here we go. March rolled around. However, this everything changes in March. Now we're going to jump off the deep end here. Um, I don't really need to go into super crazy detail about, you know, the pandemic and COVID and all that. But, you know, it happened and, you know, is happening still. And our lives have changed. Everyone's lives has changed. So um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about it and how it affected me and what I decided to do to prioritize my safety uh, over everything. Um, one highlight, though, however, March 7th, we did celebrate the one-year anniversary of this podcast. So we're coming up. We're coming up to year two. Two years. Feels still, oh, baby's getting so big. Feels like just yesterday. So March 7th, we're going to celebrate our two years. So that's in that's in a few months. Um, so rumblings and news started to circulate about this kind of unknown virus. And by by early March, we were hearing that. And then by March 30, by the end of March, 31 people in Korea have been confirmed to have this unknown virus. Um, and then shortly after that, end of March, beginning of April, it's kind of a full-blown spread. News traveled, uncertainty loomed over, and everything began to kind of go into lockdown. People started to kind of, not necessarily panic, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on where we don't know exactly what's happening with this sort of thing, this this new virus. And it was, you know, it's uncharted waters for everyone. So we're kind of, uh, we're kind of freaking out about it. You know, we're not knowing what's going on. Me personally, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. Because there's there's a lot there's a lot that's going on there's a lot that's being told to us that may or may not be true right the news and social media may or may not be true um, there's stuff that's like physically happening in the real world that we can see some stuff may be blown out of proportion maybe not maybe we're not told enough maybe, you know what I mean so it's it's a it's a difficult thing because we're we're only we only know what we're told, but then also what we can actually see with our own eyes and hear with our own ears. So we have to be cautious. And that's how I took the stance is like, look, have I seen anyone specifically with this virus? Like, no, I physically haven't seen anyone or been around anyone. But uh, if this is true, I don't really want to be around anyone who has it. So 
I'm going to prioritize my safety if at all possible. So we, so Steph and I began, we talked about it and, you know, take safety precautions and make sure we're washing and just being extra safe and careful. And, and you know what? We're internal. We're, we're homebodies anyway. We're always inside. We do our thing. You know, we have our little kingdom here that we, uh, that we do and, and hang out in. And so like being inside, isn't really that big of a deal for us. So we, we talked about it. We're like, you know, let's just continue to stay and be safe in here until we see what's really going on until we can figure out and make, you know, a decision for ourselves. And that's just what we did. Um, my place of employment, um, they wanted to continue to work like a lot of people did. Of course, that makes sense. I mean, you know, we got to work, got to make a paycheck. You got to pay your bills. Like I get that. Um, there wasn't a lot of safety features in place at that time, but again, I don't blame them because there was, I mean, this is all brand new. You know, we're not prepared for this stuff. Nobody's prepared for this stuff. So it's understandable. But by the time the pandemic actually happened and by the time they actually, our governor locked our our state down on a mandatory 30-day lockdown, by that time, it was too late to get hand sanitizer and, and Clorox wipes and, and um, K, KN95 masks. Like it was, it was just too late. Like there wasn't enough. There wasn't enough. In fact, there wasn't even toilet paper. We couldn't even get toilet paper for months. I mean, that's insane. Let's be real. Let's be real here. You know, what's one thing, not to derail, but what's one thing that we learned early on about, you know, when the pandemic started? What's one thing? This is, uh, this is a joke, by the way. This is a joke coming at you. I learned how to wipe my ass properly. <laughs> I learned how to wipe my ass properly because we started using the baby wipes and the wet wipes for that shit. And you know what's amazing? I've been wiping my ass wrong my entire life. I'm telling you, man, the wet wipes, the, the baby wipes are amazing. No wonder babies love them. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding. I mean, they're amazing, but I had never really used that too much before. But now, hey, it's great. And now we have them on hand and that's what we use around here. So if you ever have to come over here to our house and take a shit, just know you can use our baby wipes. They're amazing. You'll love them. <laughs> um, so anyway, we went into a mandatory lockdown. And as this was escalating and progressing, I was starting to get kind of not nervous, but I was kind of like, man, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to jeopardize my safety. I don't really want to jeopardize the safety of Steph or anyone else that's around me. So um, yeah, I, I told my place of employment, like, this is like, we need to come up with some sort of safety things and they didn't have it. You know, they said, no, we we'll, we're working on it, but we don't have it. Um, on top of that, they were, they wanted us to do something else at, at work. I, I can't go into details and I don't want to go into details because I can't talk about specifics of, of what I do over there. But I, they wanted us to do something where we had to be very close to people at all times and with random people. And I, you know, with this pandemic going on and everything, what people are saying, we're seeing people are dying from it and there's no safety things involved. I said, you know what? I, 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 I'm not comfortable with that. And they said, look, that's fine. If you know what, you can go home. Um, you can go home if you want, but you know, we're going to stay up and running. But then it was shortly after that. It's just everything. They, they shut down and uh, they shut down. So they did that. And uh, yeah, yeah, which was fine because I was going to prioritize my safety anyway and just come home. So I came home and I, I you know, came home with no pay, of course. Uh, but we, uh, I felt good because I was prioritizing my safety. And that's number one, number one. And uh, I'm not going to jeopardize that. I'm just not. And no, no, no job, no place of employment is worth my uh, risking my safety or my health. I'm straight up like that's just that's just me. Maybe other people you can think differently, but for me, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And if I don't feel safe or, or or that my health or my safety are in the best interest while I'm performing a job for somebody or somewhere or at any place, I'm gone. That simple. I don't mess with it. So yeah, man, that's simple. Uh, everything else uh, really got hit hard. Uh, the hotel industry, the airline industry, all the stuff, which is like bam, 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 bam. They call it the beach uh, the, uh, the beach, uh, stocks, uh, booking, entertainment, airlines, cruises, and hotels beach. So yeah, um, it was insane, man. Live nation, Delta, Marriott, Southwest, all these airlines, six flags, theme parks, everything's just shut down. It just changed the world overnight. Insane stuff. 
So then from there, here we are. We go into lockdown. I begin to come up with a game plan to uh, use this time wisely and use it as an opportunity to go full time and push my entertainment, which I did. And uh, I, mean, I continue to. I continue to go full time uh, on a non full time schedule, but I'm I'm doing this, you know, as best as I can anyway. But from them, from that point forward, I went like four or five days a week alive, uh, but I also was producing seven days a week with content and making stuff. I came up with lots of great ideas. I did a lot of awesome videos. I did game game modes we forgot about. I did Will It Boot. I pulled out um, computers from the garage, Windows XP from the early days, the early 2000s. Um, I put those up. I started doing help videos and audio help videos. I did microphone reviews. I did some, I did even a game review, I think, or two, like an old EMU review style game review. A lot of cool stuff. So I was having, I had the time to do it and I was experimenting and having fun going back and making awesome videos. And it was fun. I really, really enjoyed it. I loved it a lot. Um, you know, we start to learn, we start to learn new terms now, right? We start to learn flatten the curve, social distance, pandemic, all these terms that we never really used too much in our life have now become daily use or household names. March 11th, once the uh, Global Health Organization declared COVID as a global pandemic, that was a day they actually classified it as a global pandemic. That is when the bomb exploded and unemployment hit its swift decline. 22 million in the U.S. had filed jobless claims in March of 2020. U.S. unemployment levels in 2020 were roughly 10 times higher than the previous peak unemployment levels in absolute terms. 10 times higher. Yeah, I mean, we already know it's crazy. It's just hard to hear it. You know, it's hard to like wrap your head around it. Like that's insane. That is just insane to think about. Uh, yeah, so again, I uh, prioritized my safety. I was here... I was talking to some listeners of the show too. I talked to Cameron or talked to a few others and we were, you know, we were all kind of in this together, you know, like some people reached out and we talked about it and it was, you know, it was interesting time for sure. It was, it was scary because a lot of people lost their jobs. They, they lost their homes, you know, a lot of family life got ruined and it's just, it's terrible. You know, I feel, I feel bad for, you know, the millions and millions of people out there that, uh, that were that became jobless and were affected by this um, this tragedy, to be honest. Um, I think you can, you know, things things change. I don't want to go too deep into this, but I, I just want to say that it is also one thing that we all learned together um, in this is that you you can see the true colors of your place of employment during times like this. And I say times like this, like it happens often, like this doesn't happen ever or hasn't this specific thing, but you're going to see the true colors of companies, of businesses during crisis. And I think it was eye opening for a lot of people and I don't mean like the restaurants that were forced to close down because customers couldn't come in. I don't mean that. I mean, that's terrible too, right? But that's due to customers not coming in and no one going out to eat. And that's, that sucks. But also, just, just watch. Just watch. Just watch how the companies handle themselves. Because that is going to leave a, a real taste in your mouth if that was the right way to handle things or not. And to be honest, if you want to think about it, you want to really break things down. I was just talking about restaurants. You want to talk about it. If, you know, if they have to close because of the pandemic and they force them out of work, then they should, they should be paid compensation for being out of work. It's not their fault that they had to leave their, their uh, restaurant job. It's not their fault. You know what I mean? But there's no support. Um, you could probably file for unemployment or whatnot. I know a lot of people did, but it's just like, it's, it's a, it's a really sticky, scary kind of situation. A lot of people were left stranded and a lot of whether, whether they felt like it was their, their job to do that or not. A lot of companies left people hanging. Uh, and I don't think that was right. 
So yeah, our uh, our governor or ordered the stay at home order, and we just went in lockdown. So basically, through March 18th through really July 12th, um, I did full time streaming, full time gaming, uh, content creation, uh, weekly podcast continues. I streaming, I was streaming four days a week. Uh, I was playing. I just went to look through my stream, my Twitch, and went back. Uh, games like Call of Duty Warzone, which came out. That was a huge game this year. American Truck Sim, Animal Droppings, Community Game Nights. I did Drive Club on the last night it was online. Halo 1 Co-op. That was amazing. I played that with Bido. We did retro console gaming. Tons of fun. From March 18th to about July 12th. Uh, and about and about four months total in span, I beat 25 games on Twitch live. I do have a list of those games. I will talk about the list of those games at the end. Really, really cool. This is the most I've completed any games in my entire life. Not just in like a year, but like, dude, in like maybe five or 10 years. Like I have, it's been tons of fun to beat these retro games again. And again, that's, I'm thankful for Rewind and Save States, which I'll talk about at the end. The two amazing things that have come this year. Not, well, I mean, they are not new, but they're really blowing up this year. And I love Rewind and I love Save States. I love the quick, the quick saves and stuff. So you know what? I can now enjoy my games because of that. So I'm really thankful for that. Uh, March 20th, what a time, right? What a time. Animal Crossing launches. Tom Nook digs his greedy claws into my ass. Tom Crook. Yeah, Animal Crossing comes out to great, great, amazing um, success. And even to this day, very successful. March 30th, I go on one last ride with Drive Club on PS4 before the game gets pulled from Sony's store completely. It was a sad day for sure. Absolutely love Drive Club. It's one of the best, most underrated games ever created in the racing genre. Yeah, so I made a, an announcement video about my full-time entertainment. I did that on uh, April 7th. I knew I'd be at least 30, 60, maybe even 90 days depending um, doing this. So I was excited and I made a video about it, talking about it. And uh, yeah, it was pretty rad. It's pretty rad. Um, April 12th was an interesting day because that was the day when I got a raid. I was doing some American Truck Simulator and I got a raid on Twitch and they came through and they're like, hey man, like we... We're trying to chat with you, but you have it on followers only chat. And I was like, followers only chat. I'm like, well, this isn't, wait, what? And I was like, isn't that a feature that I had fucked up? First of all, I had fucked up. And unless you're following my channel, you weren't able to chat with me. And that was fucked up. I did not know that feature was on. And uh, yeah, like it, actually I had said it a long time ago, but I thought I took it off and it didn't get taken off and it's buried in a menu and I just don't go into the menu and look for all that shit. And people were chatting like normal, but they were the follow my followers. So I didn't know any different. Oh man, it was literally the biggest mistake I ever made on Twitch. And I made a video about it, talking about it as kind of a PSA to like, hey, you know, I'm big on community, big on that. Uh, don't sabotage yourself by turning that on. <laughs> Let everyone come through and chat. You know what I mean? That's like, that's like, it's a, that's like being at a party and no one can come up and talk to you unless you're best friends with them. If they're not best friends with you, you can't, you, you will not talk to them. That's like, that's exactly what that's like. Like what crazy. So if you're a Twitch streamer, make sure you have that off. You want, you want new people to, that come through to be able to chat with you. Hello. So I made a video, biggest mistake I ever made on Twitch. That's fucking terrible. But I posted about that. Um, and then May rolls around. Um, May is an interesting, uh, an, another terrible wham, bam, shitty ass month for us there because in the midst of the pandemic, this is the murder of George Floyd and it becomes the next disaster to hit uh, the U.S. Uh, Black Lives Matter protests. Um, oh man, I can't breathe. These words here sparked the ongoing flames of a significant movement that happened in the summer of 2020. Um. After the killing of George Floyd on May 25th by police, um, the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project, ACLED, recorded over 7,750 Black Lives Matter inked demonstrations all over on a three-month span. Yeah, man, people need to say things about this because it's not right. And... It's, it's very, uh, honestly, who am I to say? This is fucking terrible. 100% terrible. This is, this is dysfunction and corruption at the highest level. 
And the sad reality is, the sad reality is that was just one instance that just so happened to be filmed. Reality is that happens every single fucking day. And it's disgusting. Ninety-three percent of the protests that happened were peaceful, uh, of course, but the other very small percentage were hostile, damaging uh, city structures, buildings, businesses, caused a lot of civil unrest within their communities. It's crazy. To th it's crazy to think that ninety-three percent were peaceful, and the news pretty much blasted twenty-four-seven nonstop coverage of the riots and cars burning and all that sort of thing. Now. There were lots of, and you may say, what, 93% were peaceful. The, the ones that were not peaceful were very, very aggressive. And once that snowball starts going down the hill and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's like a wrecking ball. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, once people start damaging and burning buildings and, and turning cars over and causing complete chaos in the city or wherever, you know, it's just, it's it's terrible. It's It's very, very... Um, aggressive and dangerous. Um, the news really did fuck with people during this time as well. Got to be careful about that. You really got to be careful about what you see and what you believe and what you uh, what you're being told. So, um, I say that because I know there was a lot of peaceful events that were happening. Um, May and June roll around here. The world works from home. Work from home. Here we go. If there's one positive out of this thing, a lot of people were able to work from home, which uh, which actually sparked a lot of different things. A lot of technology, a lot of uh, apps being used, mobile devices. This really changed the landscape of work from home. It's really a challenge and an opportunity. Balancing act, I would say, to be honest. Um, we rely so much now on technology. I mean, we did before, but now it's almost like, yeah, if I don't have a Zoom, or I don't have Skype, or I don't have Slack, or I don't have whatever, I'm not able to work. It was a big deal, a very, very big deal. Um, the reliance on technology just went through the roof this time. No more, of course, than Zoom. Zoom Communications, their market capital, in December of 2019, okay, December of 2019, at the end of the year, their market capital was about $10 billion. Oh, million. I'm sorry. I was like, wait, hold on. Where's the B or the M? $10 million market capital, 2019. In March, $200 million. Just three months later, it went to three, or $200 million. And then on April... A month later, it went up another 100 million to 300 million. Insane. That's insane. It went from 10 to 300. Yeah, that is how. And I remember seeing this and I remember them saying, yeah, um, actually, I remember Zoom saying, yeah, um, we need help. We're hiring um, any, any engineers. <laughs> Our platform is being completely swamped. I get it. I get it. That's really cool, though. It's really cool to see that at least some of the people were able to continue to work from home and uh, adjust that way accordingly. Um, I have this little article here, this little um, picture. It kind of breaks down the, um, the benefits of remote working. There are some positives to remote working. 32% uh, Say flexible schedule is important. That's the number one flexible schedule. Twenty six percent working from any location is a is a benefit. Twenty one percent say no commute is a benefit. Eleven percent say time with family is a benefit. And seven percent seven percent say just working from home is a benefit. I I, I would think that seven percent would be higher. I I would love 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 to work from home. Absolutely, my commute is a hundred miles every day. That's round trip, two hours in the car. I would love, 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 love to work from home. So if you've got it, enjoy it. Um, 
as such, during this time, it wasn't really just work from homes that saw a boost. It was Twitch streaming exploded. YouTube views across the platform saw a rise overall because people are home. Makes sense. Uh, a lot of brand new streamers trying to find new ways to monetize and make money. It's understandable. I get you. Um, so all these outlets did see a spike, YouTube and Twitch. And, uh, you know, it's funny, too, because remember Mixer shut down this year as well. That was a little side note. So Facebook gaming saw a huge tick. In fact, I've seen Facebook gaming take a huge tick uh, for me because I get lots of friend requests from uh, gaming channels now, not just people or, or pages, like the actual gaming channels. Um, so on May 9th, I announced that I have a new DJ setup coming. I had ordered the, the Denon Prime and I had been practicing and getting things together, but I was setting up a brand new setup for it. And I posted a picture on social media. Very cool. You should check it out. Pretty awesome. And so that I was excited to bring the DJ streams back. Coming together, baby. We're doing it. May 14th, though, I dropped a remix. Just a random remix because I felt like working on a song that day. I dropped a random remix of an older song I did called Be Right. It's the Be Right remix. You should check that out as well. Very great song. And then on May 19th, 10 days later, I return to the DJ sets on Twitch. And it begins. The music begins. Shortly after, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not long for the world. No, I, I mean, I still, I still stream and I still, I still do DJ stuff, but like I started it. And then shortly after the DMCA stuff starts happening, uh, and we start having copyright strikes and we start having channels being pulled down due to copyright. It's a really, really scary, scary time because basically the long story short is here's what happened. Once the pandemic started, everyone's at home, Twitch is blowing up, people are on YouTube. It's everything's blowing up. Entertainment's blowing up. Once the RIAA publishers, record labels, all these people see that there's money to be had uh, from Twitch streamers, which they just thought it was just some stupid platform where people were just playing games. It's not, by the way. There's communities. It's a really great platform. But once that happened and they saw dollar signs, they came after everyone. It just went for it. And just like if they're streaming our music, take them down. Can't have it. Take them down, you know? So that's basically what started to happen. I started to think about this and I said, how can I, as a musician, as somebody who creates their own music, owns 100%, look, I am the artist, all right? I am the recording engineer. I am the producer. I am the record label. I am the publisher. I am the copyright owner and holder of the music. I'm, I'm the all-in-one. I, I, I'm the turnkey. I own it all. I built it that way so that I could release my music. I thought, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can help people out. I can help this situation by releasing my back catalog of music. For years, I've been producing music. And it may be a song that I'm just feeling that night. or I, I'm in a mood. I'm feeling that way. I write something and I put it on the shelf. Boom. And it sits there. Maybe I'll use it for an album or something. Maybe I'll use it for whatever might be fitting. But typically, I don't because, because I'm very attached to the songs that I write. I have to have them do something to me. I have to feel a certain way with a song when I write it for it to make sense to me. So I have literally hundreds of songs that I've just put on the shelf that are that are okay. Some are okay. Some are pretty good. And some are not maybe that great. But their ideas, their concepts... They're just little background beats. Maybe they're loops. Maybe they're just a, a, a chord progression. Maybe it's just a chord progression and a bass line and a drum beat that I looped. And I'm like, yeah, that kind of sounds cool. I like it. And I'll just, you know, whatever. Maybe someday I'll do something with it and I'll leave it there. These songs have been sitting on the shelf for 20 years. Some 20 years. But this dates back all the way to the early 2000s when I started writing my own music in like 2000, 2001. So I said to myself, I am missing the opportunity. I am missing the opportunity to help the community right now. They are wanting to play music on their streams and use them in their YouTube videos as background music. They're wanting to use them in their podcasts. They're wanting to use them in their content, wherever you are. They want, they want to play it on their Facebook gaming pre-stream show. They want to use it as an outro. They want to do something like, folks, I can help. And that's when I dove in and I said, you know what? Let's do it. I'm creating something I called Background Beats. Jason Heine presents Background Beats. And it's a collection of songs that you can use royalty-free. 
I own the copyrights and I'm giving the copyrights uh, or I'm, I'm, I'm retaining the copyrights so that you will not have any issues with that. You don't have to pay anything for it. It's royalty free. You can stream it from Spotify or an Apple. You can download physical MP3s, well, digital MP3s from my band camp. And then you can use them in your YouTube videos. Yeah, absolutely. And I just feel so great about it because it is helpful in navigating this very tricky, slippery slope landscape. So yeah, I begin on the process of doing background beats. And I announced that June 21st, um, I announced that I'm doing about 130 songs that I had complete. This was about uh, this was about 37 from Chillax, which is my like down tempo, chill kind of relaxing stuff. And I have another like 50, I have about another hundred or so that were like hip hop and upbeat. And then I have others that are kind of like cutting edge, I called. And I just have these mixes. So I'm basically creating background beats, albums, and then different um, genres within them. Chillax, cutting edge, upbeat. A thick funk, retro, whatever. They're going to be different albums. So, uh, and so far I've released, well, I've released three technically, but one I had to pull back and I'll talk about that at the end of the podcast. But I've released two albums, Hip Hop and Chillax. They're all online. You can stream them, do it, listen to them, enjoy them. They're there for you. I feel really good about that because it's really rewarding because I can actually do something with this music now. I can do something with it. That's great. It's just fantastic. I, I I feel really, really good about it. Mixer announces on Twitter that they are shutting down June 22nd. Can you believe that? Shocking. Like, that came out of nowhere. You remember that? They just basically got on Twitter and like, yeah, we're shutting down. Wait, what? What? Bruh, 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 bruh. Insane. Insane stuff. That happened quick. And it was like 30 days later, they were done. Like, what kind of shit is this? Uh, July 5th, I host a Hot Shot Racing beta community game night. Uh, I was talking with Lucky Mountain Games, my homie Trev over there, the uh, the lead and uh, uh, producer of the game. He gave me a bunch of beta keys and said, hey, get your community involved. You want to do a game night? Absolutely want to do a game night. So we did. We hosted it. I did it live on Twitch. We played for six hours. It was incredible. We had so much fun. Thanks to everyone who came by to participate in the Hot Shot Racing beta. It was a lot of fun on PC. Then July 13th rolls around. Well, what day is that? Oh, a special day. It's my birthday. I say, oh, happy birthday, Jason. Something interesting happens on my birthday, though. Something that I I notice, but I kind of just be, I don't think anything of it. I literally think nothing of it because it's just whatever. You know, I, it's not that big of a deal. But on my birthday, July 13th, I noticed a very small dark spot, kind of almost looked like a bruise on the tip of my nose. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little dark spot. A little, I'm like, it looked like a bruise. And I thought to myself, did I just run into a wall? Or did Steph punch me in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping? Did she punch me in the face when I'm snoring or something? And I just don't think anything of it. I just like, oh, whatever. It will probably just go away in a few days. More on that later. July um, 9th. Oh, a few days before that. Actually, I got them in the wrong order. But July 9th, I finally get my new Twitch emotes. So I have my cool emotes. I got the Bob emote. I have my GG. Finally, it took so fucking long to get them. But I finally got my all new Twitch emotes. And my rebranding really was complete in 2020 across the board, which is great. July 18th, I go through more boxes of home videos on my Hi8 tapes and continuing to archive and back them up. Now, being home, I have time to do this. So this is great. I have a lot of great footage. I find Battle of the Bands in, in high school, and I find uh, California road trips, and I find uh, Hawaiian Maui trips, and I find all these great, great um, tapes with lots of great footage. I find some old car club tapes where I have you know our Hondas and my Integra and um, a bunch of great, great uh, uh, footage there. So I'm archiving and slowly importing and backing them up. Very, very cool stuff. Those would go on to be useful in my current project, which is great, which I didn't even know was going to happen yet. Uh, but yeah, very, very cool. Um, July 30th, I did something kind of new and fun. I did a three-hour studio session 
showing and talking about background beats. I basically set up my mobile streaming unit next to my studio computer, turned on the webcam, plugged in the microphone, and just went live. And I worked for three hours in the studio, mixing and, and arranging and mastering the background beat songs. And I just wanted to show people the process and let them hear some of the songs and let them know like, hey, I'm doing this and it's coming out soon. Be on the lookout. It was really cool. I still, down the road, I would like to get to a place, uh, and we may get to a place to do this. Um, more on that later. Uh, I always say more on that later because I know I have them later on in the notes. A lot of cool stuff coming up. Um, you know, where I have basically like the webcam set up in the studio and I'm just working and and doing my thing. And it's almost like your camera kind of like you're just the wallflower in the room, just watching and observing and listening. And and uh, I think that'd be really rad. I've always wanted just to have like this this live cam always set up in the studio. And so maybe we'll get to that point and it'd be really, really cool to have to show like when I'm working on music and being creative. It's it's a cool process. It's a magical process that you can't fabricate. Like you have to be in that mood. So sometimes you're in that mood and mode and you're just handling business. Love for you guys to hang out and be a part of that. And then boom, after July, uh, August 13th, Hotshot Racing finally releases and it gets released to critical claim. Man, I'm telling you, it was so awesome to finally release this game. I've been talking about it for literally five years, and I haven't been able to openly discuss a lot of the details about it while the game is being made. I'm under NDA, and I understand that, and I want to maintain my relationships with the developers and the publishers and all that sort of thing, because guess what? I'm in this business to, uh, to do audio for games, bruh. I'm in it. I'm not trying to mess up relationships, so... Um, I maintained a very great relationship with Lucky Mountain Games and Curve Digital and Sumo Digital, too. Uh, they're all fantastic people. What an amazing, super talented group of people. Um, absolutely love them. And I'm so thankful to be a part of it. It's one of the greatest achievements of my life to do the soundtrack to that game. And it shows. People came out of the woodwork. They came crazy out and said, wow. I love the music. Like it actually got people talking and uh, I posted the soundtrack all over social media. It's online and people have loved it, enjoyed it. If you haven't listened to that soundtrack yet, please take a moment and do so and, uh, you know, put it on your playlist on Spotify to listen to it or Apple music, whatever you listen to and give it a whirl, uh, give it a whirl. I really, I put everything that I could possibly do. I put my best work into that soundtrack is very fitting for the game. Arcade racing, 90s inspired, virtual racing inspired, an amazing team of people, Sumo Digital, Lucky Mountain Games. I mean, these guys, oh, it was a dream come true. Absolute dream come true. When all the stars align, it creates a moon. And that's exactly what happened with this game. Very, very cool. I, in fact, got a message. As I'm writing my notes, this message comes through on YouTube. And, and you'll see it. I have it here. Um, I don't think this person listens to the podcast. His name's Elijah. Uh, but I wanted to post a, a picture and show it here because as I was writing my notes and talking about it, you see here, I took a screenshot. It was like one day ago. Like it literally just came through. It was really weird. It was like, again, when the stars align or people people connect, sometimes people connect a certain way to stuff and some people connect to my music and they really, really get it. And that makes me feel so good. Like I actually did something right. Like I... I affected this person's life in a positive way. That makes me feel so, so good. Again, because I'm just Jason. I'm just a normal dude. I'm no one special. But for me to be able to do that to that guy, oh, that's amazing. Oh, I want to continue to do it. I never want to stop doing that. And so he says here, look at this. Elijah, he posts on here. He says here, and I'll read it. I hope you're getting the spotlight you deserve for these awesome songs. I have three switches mounted in my car for Uber and Lyft and only Hotshot Racing is installed on them. Many, all caps, many of my passengers have praised the game for having such catchy beats. I've had some even tell me to raise the volume in the car. Keep doing what you do. A lot of these pieces are underrated and deserve to be heard. Elijah White on YouTube. Thank you, Elijah. I appreciate that. I don't think you listen to the show, but if you do, much love to you, and I would love to take a ride in your car with three switches on land playing hot shot. What? You, sir, are a fucking genius. Love it. 
So yeah, it makes me feel super good and accomplished. September 1st rolls around. Uh, you know, we, we cruise through August. It was, you know, it's hot summertime, a lot of stuff going on. We're inside, we're quarantined. And then uh, September 1st, the, uh, the little dark spot on my nose that I've, I've ignored for the last, oh, so month and a few weeks, starting to get a little darker, starting to get a little bigger. And it has this one kind of round, almost like, I don't want to, it kind of sounds gross, right? Kind of, it looks like, like a, like a, like a, a boil almost around the tip, just this round little ball kind of just slowly protruding from the top of it. And I'm like, all right, maybe, maybe it's like a zit or something. Maybe it is right. So me being the smart guy I am, I try to like pop it. I can't pop it. I literally can't. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. Something is weird with this, right? That's when I notice, okay, this isn't like a, a pimple. This is something else and it's changing. <sighs> I hoped it would go away and it hasn't. And it was at that moment when I looked at it and I looked at myself in the mirror and I, I looked at Steph and I go, does this look like something weird to you? Cause it looks like something weird to me. And she goes, yeah, this, that does definitely look like something weird and it's not going away. And I said, well, I tried to pop it and I couldn't pop it. It wouldn't, it would not go. And there's, there's no like white head on. There's nothing. I, I can't do it. So I said, you know what? Fuck. <laughs> That's pretty much what I said. I said, fuck. I have to go get this looked at. I have to go get it looked at. That's not right. There's something weird there. You know, I've never had anything like that before. So I decided to go in and have it looked at. I go into the doctor and he says, all right, well, well, let me see. And I pull my mask down and he looks at it and he goes, you need to get that removed immediately. Immediately. He goes, it appears to be some sort of skin cancer. Could be other things, but it appears to be some sort of skin cancer. It was at that point that I made an appointment to go see uh, a surgeon. He goes, I'm going to send you to a surgeon. I don't even want you going to a dermatologist because that needs surgery. And I say, well, cheers. Let's go. That was on uh, September 1st. Here's the timeline. Listen to this. September 1st. So I'm like, fuck. I come home, I make a post. I'm like, well, I got skin cancer on my nose. This shit is fucked, all right? Lots of amazing people re uh, writing to me, talking about skin cancer, talking about their experiences with skin cancer, how they overcame it, what happened, their experiences, different types of skin cancer. And I already, so skin cancer already runs in my family. In fact, uh, you probably can't, can you see this little scar right here? Right there. That was a mole that I had removed when I was really young um, on the uh, the advice of doctors. So like, I, you know, I have had some moles removed and skin cancer does run in the family. So I have to be very careful. I have a lot of moles on my skin. You know, I've got, you know, these big sexy arms. You know, I got moles on them, baby. You can touch them if you want. It's no problem. Be careful. I'm, t I'm tender. I'm tender. <laughs> Um, oh my God, where was I? So yeah, September 1st, the fucking derailed May 1st, no, September 1st, I, I make an appointment and I go in. So I go in and he tells me it's skin cancer and that I need to have it removed as soon as possible. I'm like, great. Okay. Awesome. Well, a, f a week later, September 7th, hotshot racing documentary gets posted. I post that, go watch it. If you haven't already, I've been working on it for a very long time, many, many months it is an absolute great look back into the production of the game and, and my contribution to the soundtrack. It's on my YouTube channel. Please go watch it. Hotshot Racing Documentary. Put it on your playlist and sit down with some popcorn and enjoy. The next day, the very next day, September 8th of 2020, we're here. We're quarantined. We're locked down. We're doing our thing. Our landlord sends us an email and says, hey, um... We're raising your rent uh, 300 bucks. So pay that next month if you could, please. And we're like, what the fuck? Are you serious? 300 bucks? Like that is not a small fucking thing. That's not like 
20 bucks, 50 bucks. That's 300 bucks a month more. What? And Steph's like freaking out. I'm freaking out because I'm like, that's bullshit. I'm like, there's got to be some sort of law about that. They can't. I'm like, there's there's got to be some sort of law that prevents landlords from raising rent that much. It has to be a percentage or something. I know there was in Oregon when I lived. There's only a certain percentage you can do. And I went and looked it up. And can you fucking believe it, your ass? Arizona has no law about that. Arizona doesn't have a lot of laws about <laughs> some things, to be honest, is what I'm learning. But uh, there's no law about that. They can raise it however much they want at any time, pretty much. So we're like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're basically paying someone else's, like, like, major mortgage. You know what I mean? Like, we're paying as much as a mortgage. So we're like... We actually sit down and we talk about this. And this is, this is going to go into later on as well is, you know, we, we sit down and we say to ourselves, what do we really want to do here? What do we really want to do? Because we're, we're stuck now. We have to pay this while we're here, but do we really want to be here? And then we kind of start looking at other places. We start to look at options because I like to keep options wide open. I am never going to shut down options. I'm never going to shut down a conversation. I'm never going to shut down someone's suggestion or or uh, words of wisdom or like, hey, what about this idea? What about this? Because be open-minded because you never know what will happen tomorrow and you may need to flex a certain way. So we start talking. We start talking about it. We say, look, do we go? Because we're renting and that's the shittiest part about it. And renting is great. Renting works uh, it's worked for us for a long time, but again, it's not going towards anything. We're not actually paying ourselves. You know what I mean? We're not, it's not going towards anything. We're paying someone else's mortgage on the house. Right. So we're like, look, do, do we rent somewhere cheaper? Can we find somewhere cheaper? Or do we look at maybe getting our own place, maybe somewhere down the road? And so we start to look at options at this point because we're really frustrated that we just got our fucking rent raised $300. Bullshit. What a, what a fucking dick move, right? Right in the middle of the pandemic, they're like, yeah, by the way, just terrible. September 9th, the, the next day after that, right? The next day I have a follow-up appointment. And my follow-up appointment is to actually go see my surgeon specifically. So here's the timeline. September 8th, we get fucked over on our rent. The next day, I'm going into the hospital to meet with the surgeon about this fucking cancerous nose. I'm quite depressed. I'm quite upset. Just when the whole state of the world, everything, you know, the rioting and the news and everything is going on, the pandemic, and we're locked down, and, and I'm off work, I'm not getting paid, and I'm just like, all the shit is just piling up. It's all just like compacting on, on me, and it's really affecting me and changing. It's pissing me off, you know what I mean? So... I go in and have my nose looked at and they do um, some lab results with it. And the surgeon diagnosed it with some long ass name that I can't even pronounce properly, but he says that some sort of blood vessel lesion and possible skin cancer that uh, it needs to be dealt with, removed and cut out. And it needs to be carefully done so because it's the raised part on it was a blood vessel. And if that isn't handled properly, that could bleed out. A blood vessel will bleed, continue to bleed. So I have to be very, very careful with that. And I'm just like, oh my God, okay. Well, do you, and I look, I'm like, do you, you know how to do that, right? Like, you know, what the fuck? I tried to pop it, it didn't work. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Please help me, man. Please help me, man. Um. So I made an appointment at that day. And he said, yeah, let's, let's get this taken care of as soon as possible. And he looked to his assistant, he goes, put him on the books. Let's get him in. Let's get him in as soon as possible. So, um, Yeah, so I schedule and uh, that begins. From there, I don't remember the day I had. Oh, actually, I do. It's later on. It's, um, I think it's October. October 9th, I believe is what it was. I think it was. So yeah, anyway, I make an appointment. And um, yeah, it's about a month out. So I'm just like, hopefully it doesn't get any worse or I don't. Like something that doesn't happen to my face. You know what I mean? So um, we make an appointment to get that taken care of at the hospital with the surgeon. Um, skip forward here. September 11th, my older brother flies into town and he begins looking for a house to buy 
as he is being transferred. And it's it's a promotion. He got a promotion at his job, but is also being transferred down to the Southwest to handle a certain territory. Um, he's in sales. And so it's very cool. He was like, yeah, I'm coming back. <laughs> you know, um, he moved down here originally in 2001, I believe, and was here for, for quite some time and has moved back and forth between here and Oregon. But uh, he was coming back to settle back down here for his, his job, which is really cool. So he was like, hey, I'm coming down. Can I stay with you guys for a few weeks? I'm going to go look at places and do this and do that. And we're like, yeah, absolutely. Of course, family, you know. So he came down and he started looking at places to uh, to purchase and get into. And we went around with him for, I think, one of the days. And we kind of we started looking with him at homes. New homes, new build homes, used homes, little older homes, really shitty homes, really nice homes. We just kind of went around and, you know, he's looking for a place. But Stephanie and I, we went with him, right? And we're out there, we're looking and we're going, we look at each other and we go, this this isn't that difficult to get in. Like, you almost think like it's some like far-fetched, far away thing and like unattainable that like you can just, you can get into a place. You know what I mean? Like, it's possible. It's possible. And that's when we first kind of saw like, hmm, I mean, it's possible. We both have jobs. You know, we're, we personally, and I've talked about this. I talked about this, I think last year or the year before, I've been working my ass off to rebuild my credit and my credit's great now. I've rebuilt it. I've worked my ass off. In fact, my credit card companies call me up and they say, hey, look, we're going to up your limit. You can have, you can have this much more now. You're doing great. I don't even want it. I know, man. I've been in fucking trouble before with credit cards. I've done it. I've had to live my life on credit cards and it fucked me over and my credit went to shit, but now I've rebuilt it. You know what I mean? So I understand, I understand that game. So I'm like, okay. And so we look at each other. We kind of have this moment. We're kind of like, yeah, maybe, maybe we could do something. This is kind of like planting the seeds, giving us the bug, right? And my brother's like, he found a place and he put an offer in on it and, and uh, he got it accepted. You know, this is a long story short. He got it accepted. And so he, he began the process to relocate from Oregon down to Arizona. And in fact, has, has done that. It's already said and done as I record this. It happened a few months ago, actually. Um, so yeah, it's great. It's great. What's really nice about that too is that my parents, my mom and my dad came with him. And so we're all here now, which is great. So it's cool. My younger brother is still in uh, Portland um, doing his thing, living his life uh, up there. But uh, my older brother and parents are now down here, which is great. So it's nice to have have them close too, you know, because we, we're, we're close. So yeah, so that was, um, that was September 11th. We start to start to kind of look around like, hmm, maybe, maybe planting that seed. More on that later. September 12th, Hotshot Racing OST finally hit streaming platforms on Apple and Spotify and all over the place. Boom, there it goes. It's finally released. Very awesome. Um, September 17th, I head into the hospital for a pre-op checkup. This will be my final meeting with the surgeon. Um, and he looks at it again. He goes, yeah, we need to take this care. We need to get this taken care of now. It's getting worse. I said, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I got, I'm on schedule, bro. I'm on schedule. Let's go. The schedule is set for October 9th. Yeah, there it is. That's when I'm going to have the operation at like six in the morning. I have to get up at like three and be down there. It's crazy. It's crazy. In the meantime, in the meantime, September 5th, we make it through September. We go through that month. We get done. September 5th, the, finally, the first album of Background Beats, Chillax, hits. Um, I announce it uh, October 16th as a release date. So I'm excited because I finally put together, in the midst of all this shit that's going on, all this fucking chaos, I'm able to sit down, and it takes a lot of time, mind you, I'm able to put together background beats, chillax. This is my down-tempo, lo-fi, chill, R&B, kind of groovy, slow jam hits, chill, let's get romantic, baby, mix of music, of instrumentals. And it's fantastic. I really, really love it. And a lot of people have embraced it too. So that is coming October 16th. I announced that on the 5th. All right, September 5th, I announced that. The big day. Basically, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out right after I have my surgery. Going for surgery, I feel like, okay, give myself like a week to recuperate-ish and then drop the album. Boom, it's ready to go. 
So here we go. October 9th. You guys ready? I head in to the hospital to get ready. And actually, I have a few pics. I have a few pictures. Let me see if I can get rid of this keyboard. There it is. I have a few pictures. If you're watching the video feed on YouTube, there I am. There I am on the operating table. I got my COVID mask. I got my IV in. I'm all ready to rock. They're going to take me back. And um, going to the hospital, when I give a thumbs up, look, I give a thumbs up. I'm happy. You know, I'm I'm living the dream, letting everyone know, hey, I'm here. I'm living. The thing about it is that going to the hot and I have never, first of all, I've never had, well, I guess I can't say that. I've had my adenoids out. So I did have surgery there, but it was when I was really young. I don't really remember that. So I, I can't remember any time at all in my adult life I've had surgery. So yeah, I, and I told them all too. I said, look, I have never really had surgery before. I've, I don't remember when I've had anesthesia before. Like I haven't been under, like I'm a little nervous, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, you guys are the professionals. Obviously, you know what you're doing and I'm happy and thankful, but I told them, yeah, straight up. No, no shame, no shit. I'm a little nervous and kind of, kind of scared about it. So they were very nice, very good to me. They comforted me and, uh, great nurses, incredible staff. Everyone was super awesome. And, uh, we went in there and, um, I, I went out and I woke up <laughs> with it done. I mean, it was really, it was really like that quick. You know, I went out fast and they took care of it. And, and I woke up right here in this room. The outcome of this, I'll tell you a few things that happened. One, uh, the first and most important thing is when I woke up and this, the surgeon came in to me to talk to me, uh, he said, Hey, uh, congratulations. Like we, we finished it. Everything is good. Um, we'll have you come back for a checkup. But, uh, he goes, I, we got, it appears we got all of it. He goes, but I want to tell you that when we got in there, we wouldn't have known this until we got in there. Once we got inside your nose, we saw that it actually was a tumor and it was growing. And had you not come in, uh, and taken a look at it and, you know, us do this. Um, yeah, he just said it wouldn't have been good for your life. It would have been bad. Yeah. Uh, so crazy, crazy, right? It makes you think. It makes you think. And now I know, I know there are people out there that are suffering way, way worse stuff than this. And I know that. And so sometimes I feel like it's such a small, insignificant little thing, this little dot on my nose. But the reality is, this is my reality. That's the reality. It's my reality is that I had this fucking thing on my nose. I'm, I typically will let shit just whatever, just whatever, you know, it's fine. It'll go away. I'm kind of that way. I'm glad I didn't, you know, something's wrong sometimes with your body, you know, something's not right. And I'm glad I went in and had it looked at. I'm glad I went to my doctor. I'm glad he sent me to a surgeon instead of a dermatologist who would have been like, ah, oh, we'll just treat it, whatever. I'm so thankful for the team. I'm so thankful because today I'm here, but tomorrow I could be gone. And that applies to you guys too. That's just being real about it. So because I'm here sitting right now and I'm able to look into this camera directly into your eyes and tell you, or through this microphone, through your speakers, I'm able to actually tell you how important you are, how amazing you are, how much value you have and how much you bring, how much joy you bring to people's lives. I'm able to say this to you and I truly mean it. You need to know this. You have to know this. This is why I appreciate and I thank so much is because when then when people write to me, they say things to me, I want them to know, thank you. You mean so much to me that you said that, to, that you feel think and feel that way because I could have left this tumor on my nose and I could have fucking died whenever that would have been a week from then a year from then five years from then maybe not maybe I wouldn't have at all maybe I would have been just fine I don't know you know we're working hard to cure cancer and I know many people who have died from cancer it's the, the the one thing that takes us all if we can live that long. And I just feel that 
we have, we still have things to do here. We have things to do here. So I appreciate you. So thank you all. Thank you for your kind words. People write to me, let me know that they're thinking of me during this time. And, and I know, even though it's just this little dot on my nose and, and it, it, it was a big deal for me. And it was something that could have really fucked me up and taken me away. And I'm glad I got it taken care of. And I'm so thankful for the immense talent and gift that the doctors have to be able to handle something like this. It's very scary. And, um, and I thanked my surgeon on my post follow-up. I went in and he came in just by himself. And I said, Hey, look, doc. And I told him this as I'm telling you, I said, look, I came in, I was, I said, I know this is just a little thing and you deal with a lot worse. I know, but I wanted to tell you that I was scared and nervous. I hadn't had surgery and I know it's just a little nose thing, but thank you. Thank you for taking care of this and possibly saving my life. Thank you. I'm going to continue to live now. You know what I mean? Like this was just a little thing. It could be a lot worse. I, you know, so just so I'm so blessed. I'm so thankful. This guy right here, this is crazy. So now you can look at this crazy motherfucker with the fucking, with the, uh, the TV hat on there. You know, you can look at him some more. And you see, I have a nice little, you can see the little crease. I'll turn to the side. You can see a crease on my nose. And he said, he goes, look, there's nothing I can do about that. And I said, you know what? I don't care. I am totally fine with having a freaking war wound. I'm not going to freak out about it. And they even talked and said, look, we can send you to plastic surgery. We can have that taken care of. No problem. They'll do that in a day. And I said, don't even worry about it. I'm not going to, one, I'm not going to pay for that. It's just expensive. And two, I don't care. I don't care. It's not going to affect how beautiful and handsome I am. Isn't that right, folks? Isn't that right, listeners? Huh? Huh? It's really funny. Actually, really funny story is um, right as I'm literally sitting here like this and right after she took this picture, the surgeon came in to take me away. And I said, look, doc, I said, I know you're going to be in there. You're going to be messing with my nose. You're going to be taking care of stuff. Is there any way that you can like make me look better? Can you like, you know, do something to like, just, you know, if you're going to be cutting, can you do, make me look better? And he stopped and he looked at me and he goes, that's a pretty tall order. <laughs> at least a man had a sense of humor. You know what I mean? At least he had a sense of humor. So that was a crazy time, October. And then I spent literally, now I thought, mm -hmm. let me get some water here. I thought, and I had, I had told my work, like, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I have the surgery. I may be out for a while. I'm still on lockdown and quarantine, but I was just letting them know like, hey, I'm going in for surgery and I don't know what's going on over there, but I'm probably going to be out for a while. I thought maybe a couple of weeks. Honestly, I thought maybe just a couple of weeks. Um, Yeah, no, no. I, I, I grossly underestimated, grossly underestimated how long recovery would take for this little thing. I thought, oh, it'll be just a little scab, put a little neosporin on it. The, the the stitches will fall off and I'll be good in a week or two. Nah, nah, son. Nah, nah, nah. It took, it took a solid month and like two weeks to not fully heal, but to heal for sure. Um, I want to, I'm going to show a picture. I'm just went over to, cause I have it in my Instagram. Come over to my Instagram real quick. I want to show you a picture that I posted a couple weeks ago because I hadn't actually done a recap and like put a, put it tied a pretty little bow on it and sent it off. This was the basically end result. And I have these pictures here from, here's my story of the day that I found out it was skin cancer from my doctor telling me on the left there, you can see the two little protrusions there, right? I know it's gross. I'm sorry, everyone, if you're, you're squeamish. And then here is, here is the, Literal the day I had surgery. Look at my eyes. I'm so fucked up. I'm not even like totally comprehending what's happening yet. The day of surgery on the right there was like maybe two and a half weeks after surgery for healing. And then this was, uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. I posted that of well, this is how it looks now. Not too bad. Not too bad. So yeah, cool stuff, man. Cool stuff. Uh, mad respect to the doctors I'm telling you incredible stuff. Um, 
Let me scroll back down here and get back on track where I was. Um, from this point forward, during when I'm healing up, from this point forward, from October through the end of December, all the way up until just the end of the year, I hit music super hard. This is where I really go hard in the paint on music. Um, I released three albums total. Not small ones either. They're 37 song, 40 song albums for background beats. And in 2020, I have released more music than I have in previous previous any years uh, as a whole. I have not released three albums in a year. I even did a remix in the Christmas song. I did I did I did a Christmas song too for fuck's sake, man. Crazy. A lot of great music. I've had the time to do it. I've been inspired to do it. I've been excited to do it. And when you get in those those mindsets, man, when you're in that mode, it's happening. October 16th, after surgery, I'm just laying there recovering. Background beats, chillax, boom, gets released. Hits the airwaves, huge success. People love it. People love it. I think I hit 1,000 streams in the first night of it being uh, online, which is great. And I think that was in the first day or something. It was awesome. That's a lot. And that's specific to Spotify. That was only on Spotify. I can pull my stats on all the platforms, but I was watching Spotify because it's the most popular one right now. Very, very good. And then it just continued to grow from there. People Then people started to find it and use it in their streams. I can see it. I can see the spike. I have people that stream in the mornings. I have people that stream in the evenings. And it always spikes during those times because people play it. They go live and they're like their pre-show or they're listening and they play it during that time. And then they, they play it on their outros when they leave. And it's really cool, man. It's really cool to see the trends. It's exactly what I want people to do. Enjoy it. Use it. Stay clear. Cover your ass. And be safe with that music out there. Use mine. You can use it. It's fine. Background beats, that is. Uh, October 28th, at the end of the month, I announced that the Heine House artist ATFA, always together, forever apart. It's the homie John, by the way. My man, Chancho. He's coming through. He's a Heine House artist. He's on the label. That's right. He releases his music through Heine House, and we do it as a collaborative effort. He's super talented. I love the man and he writes great music and we work extremely well together. And I'm very happy. I'm very happy to help executive produce, mix, publish, whatever he needs me to do and step in. I'm there for him. And we have a great, great time doing it. But he's releasing a record under his alias ATFA. And it's going to come out January 20th in 10 days as of recording this. January 20th, 2021 on Heine House Entertainment. At the time I was writing this, I was mixing it, but it is done. It's online. It's already it's already in the pipeline. So when on the 20th, boom, it will absolutely be released. And you can find more. Um, you can you can I'm gonna post about it too, and uh, John post about it too. You can search for him, J O N John Hake. Search for him. Heine House. It's on Heine House. You all know it's gonna be all, all over the place. You're gonna love it. Um so again, more music, great music coming up. So that's happening. A lot of stuff's going on there. For Stephanie on her side, things are a little stressful for her because she has to renew her pharmacy tech license. And what's interesting about that is her company didn't tell her that it needed to be renewed until, oh, I don't know, a few weeks before it expired. This assessment isn't, isn't anything uh, short or small. It's like a 200-question exam, and if she fails it, she doesn't get to work. It's crazy, right? So she's super stressed now, and she's studying her ass off, and she's working extremely hard, and I can see it. I can see it in her in her eyes and her face and what she's doing. She's working really hard and stress, stressing her out, and I'm trying to be supportive and help her as much as I can, but there's only so much I can do to help her. I mean, I can create flashcards and try to help her study, but like it's on her, right? So I'm trying to support her as best I can and be there for her. And the long story short, luckily, she took the exam and she passed the exam. Whew. Nothing like your job to, you know, really hold up their end of the bargain and be great on communication. I have a big problem with communication. Nobody fucking communicates. No one communicates, especially your place of employment. What's up with that? What's up with that? I don't get it. I don't get it. This that's the only thing you have is to cover your ass and talk about stuff. Like communicate. 
Let us know what's going on. How are we supposed to know this shit? We're not mind readers. We helped CJ come down, my older brother. We helped him come down and move in. It was in October. He came down. He brought a pod down. We unloaded it. We helped him. We moved in, moved it into his house. I helped him set up his TV on the wall. I run wires and cables. I set up his entertainment center. We get a switch going in his retro games. I hook up a, a Nintendo Wii. We have a good time. You know, he's moving in. He's doing his stuff. It was at that moment, Steph and I sat down after we got him in and moved in. And it's like, look, he, he just went through this process. It was pretty painless. Like, are, do you think we're able to do something? Can we do something? And we sit down at that point in October and have a real serious conversation about our future. Talk about our future. We say to ourselves, what do we want to do here? So we say it would be wise and it would be in our best interest to uh, research it and look into this because paying an additional 300 a month for a rental is there are mortgages that are this that, that are what we pay and it just doesn't make any sense anymore so we are actually currently we don't have any news just yet but we are currently in the talks um with some salespeople, with some realtors and we're going to figure out what path we're able to take because we think it would be wise to get out of this place and into something that we either own or just yeah, or own. <laughs> so we got to stop renting. We got to stop. We got to get out of that rat race. So we're seeing what options work for us. And we'll see. I think this year we're going to have answers because the market is crazy and the interest rates are really low right now. They're like 2.7%. So what everyone's telling us is like, look, I mean, and they always say this, right? They always say, well, right now is a great time to buy, you know, but reality is, is right now it really is a good time to buy. I mean, interest rates haven't been this low for forever. So maybe it's something, and maybe this is great inspiration for you to hear too. If you're renting or you got something going on, um, maybe, maybe now is the time to look. So keep that in your back pocket. As my uncle always says, when we're playing cards, always keep a stopper, you know, always keep a stopper and make sure that uh, you've got, um, you know, all of your information in front of you before you make a decision. But uh, that's what we're doing now. We're researching. So yeah, we we kind of would like to get into a, maybe something. We're not sure if it will be, you know, a, um, a house that's uh, a used house. Maybe we could do a new build. We don't know. We really don't know. But we're looking at all the options. So, but I'll I'll keep you updated, of course, of what's going on. Could be exciting. We're, we're kind of getting excited about it. You know what I mean? Like, okay, the possibility is there. Because everyone who we're talking to, they're like looking at our credit. And they're looking at it like, okay, you guys have jobs. Your credit's great. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like, yeah, yeah, it could be fine. You could probably do it. I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Like that. I never thought, I just like never thought I'd be able to do it for whatever reason. You know what I mean? Like I just now never be able to. Actually, I think a lot of us are able to. You know, it depends on your situation, of course, but you never know. So anyway, take a look at that. We're taking a look at it too. Um, November 19th, Curve Digital published a behind the scenes making of video of Hotshot Racing. You should check that out too. I know there's a lot of hot shot because this is the year of hot shot racing, man. This is the year of it. We gotta put we gotta push it. So check it out. It was on Curve Digital's YouTube channel. Go watch that as well. If you're a hot shot racing fan, you'll really, really like it. On November 20th, we're getting towards the end of the year here. November 20th, hanging out at CJ's new place. This was the first time we did a live stream with him. I took my mobile unit over there, I set it up, and he played Mega Man One for the very first time live. For everyone, it was awesome. I had the the webcam, the wide angle wi webcam up. I had the co the couch set up. We all were there, and we just streamed from his house. It was fantastic. We had a great time, and uh, that has he has fallen in love with it. He calls me up like at the end of the week, like, "Hey, are we gonna do any streaming? Are you, do you want to do any gaming? You want to do that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, it's cool." He came over last night. Just last night, I just texted him this morning. I was like, hey, man, thanks for coming over. It was awesome. We were going to play Mario Party 4 online together on GameCube through a, a program called Parsec, which all of you, please go look that up. It's a remote desktop client. All I'm, uh, let me just say, let me just break it down. You can play retro games with me online if you have this program. And you don't even need the, you don't need the program, the, the, emulators or the ROMs or any of that. All you need to do is plug in your controller to the computer and connect with me and you can play with me online. 
We can play Mar Super Mario Kart. We can play Super Nintendo games. N64 games. We can play, fuck, we can play 3DO games online together if you want. How cool is that? Yes, go download it and let me know that you have it on Discord. Let me know and I'll send you a link to where you can then get, get on my friends list on Parsec. This is going to be the biggest thing. I'm, I'm Mark my words. Do you remember when Patreon launched? Remember when Patreon launched in 2013 and I, I was like one of the, not one of the first, of course, but in the gaming community, I signed up for it. And I said to my, I said to everyone at that time, Patreon is going to be huge. Everyone is going to be on this and everyone is going to be using this to support their entertainment. Mark my words, what happened? And yeah, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to actually say this because you know what? I fucking said this. I said this. I have a knack for seeing when things are going to take off. I'm not always right, but I have a knack for seeing when things are great and they take off. I said that about Patreon in 2013, and I signed up for mine in 2013, late 2013, all right? I said the same thing about Discord when I was the only person who knew what the fuck Discord was in my community. Nobody knew what it was. Nobody had any idea. I said, look, this is a place where we all can hang out real time. This is chat. This is video. This is screen share. This is everything. It's everything. We can do We can do rooms. We can do private rooms. We can do public rooms. We can hang out. We can have different chats about podcasts, gaming, food, you name it. This is a hub. It is a hub for us to be in, to hang out. It's awesome. What happened to Discord? Boom. Everyone's on it. It's the most fucking popular other than Zoom, but that's for work. The most popular social interactive chat, video chat, voice chat. We use it for gaming. We use it for everything. It's great. Mark my words, Parsec, this is a one-year-old program. It's going to be huge in the future. People are going to be using this to connect and play games, retro games. Mark my words, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you want to get in right now, do it because this is the time. It's free right now. You can pay for their premium, which I'm actually going to because I'm going to support them. I believe they deserve it. And even though I won't use whatever the pro features are they have, like it's not a big deal to me, I want to give them money for this amazing program that I have already used immensely and have found great value in. So I'm going to support them. Um, but yeah, even yesterday, like getting back to my story, CJ, we were playing, I was streaming online and I would go, well, we're going to play Mario party four player online with four different people. Me, Bido, we were going to play, um, a Glav was going to hook in there with us. And then Steph was going to join in. And then CJ was watching. And he's like, oh my gosh, can I please come over? I want to play. I want to play. He loves it. He loves streaming with us. He loves playing. And he came over and we we had like an hour and a half of troubleshooting. And for whatever reason, people really enjoyed watching the troubleshooting phase of it. People like that for some reason. Uh, but we were troubleshooting. I was just sitting there on camera talking. We were troubleshooting, connecting stuff. Um, and we figured it out. But we played Mario Party on GameCube, Mario Party 4, online together. It was insane. It was insane, and it's great. So much fun. So huge, huge shout out. Thank you, CJ, for coming over. It was a lot of fun. Um, tons of fun. Um, moving on to November, November 28th, Background Beats Hip Hop. The next Background Beats installment was released um, on November 28th. And then Cutting Edge Beats, that was the next release. That was uh, released on December 28th. However, I had to pull it back down. I'll just say it real quick since we're talking about it. Long story short, that's always my MO, right? Long story short. They're never short. I uploaded Background Beats, Cutting Edge, which are my more kind of edgy, more aggressive, a little bit more kind of either like cut time or odd tempos, or it's a little bit more aggressive and edgy music, right? Not It didn't really fit in other genres, so I just called it Cutting Edge, and I kind of grouped them all together. It was about 36 songs or something. I uploaded it, published it, went live. About five minutes after I did, YouTube, their AI algorithm, their music content ID system, whatever it's called, uh, ID magic or whatever the fuck it's called, flagged my background beats cutting edge video, which I just put the whole soundtrack in as a video. And it said one of my songs was a song from like 87 from a UK band Erasure. I know some of you have heard Erasure. They're they're like a new wave type band. And I'm like, what? Oh, hell no. I went and looked at the copyright claim 
And I wrote, I think I wrote the song down. You can go listen to it. The song is called Ship of Fools. Shiver Me Timbers Mix. Shiver Me Timbers Mix. From Erasure. Ship of Fools. Go, I'm not going to play it on here because I'll, I'll get it again. But go look it up. And the song in question, I've since removed it. Since removed it. And I actually can't play it. I can't play. I can't even play my original song. Here's the outcome. So I... I fought it, right? I fought it. I said, this is not Erasure, Ship of Fools, Shiver Me Timbers mix. This is Jason Heine, Garbage Pail Drums. That's what I named it. That's what it is. I still haven't heard back. It's been two weeks. Two weeks, right? I'm, they're, they're going to clear it. They have to. It's not their song. It's my song. It's incorrect. I used the same chord progression that they did. That's what flagged it. Just the same chord progression. I played my song with my own hands on my own instruments, recorded it with my own cables on my own DAW, in my own computer, produced it, recorded it, uploaded it. I own the copyright to it. It's registered with the copyright office. I own it, but I am still having the claim from them saying it's Erasure. Now, here's the tricky part. You may say, well, just file a, file a counterclaim and say it's yours and then they'll clear it and you're good. Yeah, they will. They will. And in fact, that will happen. But here's the problem. Background beats, I let people use freely in their own content. They can use it. And I want them to use it. This means that if anyone downloads or uses my song, Garbage Pale Drums, which is, what a great song too. I've, I always really liked that one. It was very industrial. If anyone uses it specifically on YouTube, they will get a copyright claim. They will have to then fight it themselves and say that they own the rights to it. Which, are you kidding me? It's not their responsibility. They are using my music because they trust me and putting their trust in me that the music that I'm giving them is cleared. And it is. It's my song for fuck's sake. It's my fucking song. But the AI bullshit incorrect algorithm, this is the shit, the shit I've been, this is what I'm fighting. This is what I'm fighting directly for the community. I'm fighting this directly with you. So I literally had to pay out of the ass to remove background beats cutting edge completely from worldwide digital distribution. I had to remove from Spotify and Apple and Deezer and everywhere else and Tidal and you name it. There's like fucking a hundred places it goes. I had to remove it. It takes 30 days for it to be removed. Luckily, Spotify and Apple happen overnight. Luckily, the two big popular ones. So it's it's off. But nevertheless, I have to wait until it's fully out and then I have to re-upload it, pay to re-upload it and republish it and distribute it. I cannot, in digital domain, in a digital world, I cannot just take that one song and get rid of it. I can't. They don't offer that. It doesn't work that way. Now, however, the stuff that I upload on my website and on Bandcamp, I can, which I have. So right now, the only place you can hear this music or get it and even download it is my website and Bandcamp. So check it out. It's there. The Garbage Pail Drums, is. I took it off. I deleted it. It's not in there. You don't have to worry about it. I, you guys don't need to worry about this. You shouldn't have to. You're coming to me in good faith knowing that I am giving you music that you can use. And that is 100% the case. So I wanted to bring this up in here and tell people that is happening. It's fucking bullshit. Their, their algorithm is broken. Their magic ID content system is broken. It's a complete shit show. Complete shit show. Just think about it for a second. I had one of my own original songs flagged as a commercially released hit song. Or maybe not even a hit song. I don't even know what it is. I mean, I know Erasure, but Ship of Fools? I don't know. I never heard it. But after listening to it, I, I mean, you know, my brother said, well, that's kind of a compliment in a way. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is. And it's not. You know what I mean? But it is. I know. I get it. 
Fucking crazy. Our Christmas day was chill. Our Christmas 2020, we kept it super low key. We didn't go anywhere. We didn't do anything. We ordered groceries from ClickList. We went and we just did curbside pickup. They loaded it in the car. We came home. It was super chill. Steph worked. I worked. And uh, we just relaxed. We actually didn't even spend Christmas really together. Uh, we spent the day after together uh, and just relaxed. Because, you know, when you work, you work. Hey, that's what we got to do. Um, and I didn't stream. I didn't do anything. I Seriously, I slept. I kept it low key because I felt... I felt people would be spending the holidays with their families uh, or at home. They're doing their thing. They don't want to be tuning into this numb nuts here doing stuff. So I just didn't stream. I just kept it low key. I wished everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I just laid low. And that's how we that's how we did. And we brought in the New Year the same way. In fact, we sat right back here in the game room on the couch. Stephanie had animal droppings loaded up and we spent it. We spent bringing in the New Year's when the clock struck midnight. The countdown. We had a fireworks show in the game. We were visiting my brother CJ on his island. He had a couple of friends over as well. And we brought in the new year together in Animal Crossing. We said to ourselves, how more fucked can things be? We need to bring in the new year just low key like this. And it's really, it's really funny. I'm going to just recap. I'm going to end, I'm going to end this episode. By telling you another funny story. <laughs> Steph and I last year, when we brought in 2020, we should have known, we should have just known that 2020 was going to be royally fucked. Reason being, we went to this place. We started, we go, what do we want to do for New Year's? Let's do something new and different. This is really funny. You guys will love this. Fucking hilarious. Let's do something different. We usually go to Golfland, Sunsplash, and we play in the arcades. We usually play there because the, the, the arcade games are on free play. And basically, once midnight happens, the game they're open till like 1 a.m., right? And then after that, like once midnight happens and everyone, the ball drops and everyone parties and they all leave. Everyone leaves and the arcade is empty. We have an entire hour for ourselves basically in the arcade. We've done that for the last, I don't know, three or four years. And it's fun. But we go, let's do something new this year. Let's just do something new and crazy and random. Cool. We looked up like New Year's parties. Where do we go? We looked at this place called Amazing Jake's. And it's a it's a, it's a chain. It's like a Dave and Buster's. All right. It's this big, huge place. The difference between Amazing Jake's is that, you know, they have they have all the typical stuff that like a Dave and Buster's has. It has a bar, it has arcade games, it has redemption games, it has a little gift shop where you redeem your tokens and stuff. But it also has like carnival rides. They have like swings and carnival rides and like a Ferris wheel type thing. And it's in this massive warehouse, right? So it's called Amazing Jake's. We're like, cool, let's go. Let's go. We show up. Everything seems to be pretty cool. Kind of a nice place. You know, we like it. It's cool. We go over to the bar and like, let's just get a, let's get a drink. Let's just do a, a drink. All right. It's like 11, maybe 11 o'clock, 11, 10 ish. Um, no, no. Fuck that. It wasn't that late. It was early. It was like 10 o'clock. I remember because we're like, wait, what? At 10? It was like 10 o'clock p.m. And we're like, we'd like to get a drink. She's like, oh, no, the bar's closed. The bar's fucking closed on New Year's at 10? What? Like, that didn't make any sense. I don't know if it was because they sold out of beer or what, but we're like, okay, I guess we get no drinks or food. Like, that's fucked up. So that was already strike one. We're like, what's going on here? Super understaffed. We felt bad. They were running around like crazy. You can You can imagine. So we just were like, that's cool. All right, no problem. We didn't give them a hard time. Well, why don't we do that? We wouldn't do that. We never do that. So we're like, yeah, that's fine. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. Happy New Year. You know, we're done. It's cool. So we started walking around doing stuff, playing some games, having some fun. You know, it was okay. It wasn't great. You know, there's there was a few like arcade racing games, which were fun. They had like the Batman game. That's fun. I think they had a couple of Roth Reels bike games. That's cool. But it was mostly Redemption mostly skill games, you know what I mean? So it, it was cool. People were having fun. We were walking around. We didn't do any of the rides because, you know, big boys and girls, we don't ride those, you know, so it was okay. And then like 15 minutes till 
they make the announcement. Okay, we're going to have the the ball drop and the balloon, the balloon drop and the party. Everyone come over to the bar area. The New Year's in 15 minutes, 15 minutes. We're like, okay, great. So we're like, all right, well, here we are. Let's go over there. So we go walk over there by the bar. And I didn't notice it before because I wasn't looking up. But now that I am, uh, now that I'm there and I'm looking like balloon drop, what's the balloon drop? In the ceiling, they have basically this huge net. All right. And this net is like, it's in the shape of a cylinder, right? So it's just like cylinder full of balloons, right? It's just completely full of balloons. It's like from one end to the other, it's just huge. And it's in this like netting, right? Like, um, like chicken wire almost, but it's, it's netting. It's, it's fabric, right? It's net. And it's hanging from the ceiling. And I can see from one end, one end they have, it's, it's tied up, right? One end has this big like handle and the bottom of it you can see is like a big zipper. So what they do is when it's, when it's midnight, they grab one end and they just run it down and it unzips and all the balloons fall, right? Okay. It makes sense. Cool. Easy enough. Easy enough. So we're going to have a balloon drop. So we're like, okay, cool. We're waiting for the countdown. 10 minutes, five minutes, two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds. They start the countdown from 30 seconds, 29, 28, 27. And we're like, okay, so, you know, it's counting down 26, 25. I grab Steph, I put my arm around her and I pull her close and we sit there and I just put my head on her head and we're looking up at this cylinder, this balloon uh, basket and, you know, 15, 14 people are all running around, crowded around. They're like, yeah, yeah. People pulling out their phones. They're getting ready, you know. Um, 10, 9, everyone starts chiming in. 8, 7, people are yelling. 6, 5, everyone's like, yeah. People got their drinks up. People have their phones up. Everyone's excited. People are hugging everybody. It's packed, jam-packed where their asses, the elbows in there. 3, 2, 1, Happy New Year, people scream. Happy New Year, party. One of the employees on the side, he goes, he grabs that fucking handle and he starts to run it, run it and unzip. But it gets caught. It doesn't unzip. It catches. The zipper is stuck on the end. And he pulls it. And I see the end of it go boom, 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 coming down. And he's like, I see it. Now he's got two hands. He's pulling, he's pulling, he's pulling. He pulled so hard, it fucking pulled it off the ceiling on that end. And it just, it just dangles down. This cylinder balloon net, which looks like a giant balloon condom. Honestly, it looks like a giant cock that is just dangling down now, halfway into the crowd. And he's trying... <laughs> He's trying to get it, and this thing is wiggling and flopping around, and it looks so fucking funny. And everyone just starts dying, laughing. They are like, what? And it uh, honestly, it looks like a giant balloon dangling dick from the ceiling. They spend, they spend the next five minutes using scissors to cut the net all the way across. They literally are cutting the net. Snip, 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 snip. And they go all the way down and then the balloons just kind of trickle out and then people go crazy and pop them and then it's done in like 30 seconds. But that was so funny that that is how we brought in our 2020. And we just knew from that moment, we didn't know to what extent but we just knew that that had to have been the literal most fucked up way to bring in a new year. And we have such a funny story to tell about that. If you're listening to this right now, we have made it through 2020. We made it through with bumps and bruises, scars. We made it through with pain and hurt. We made it through with anger and dissatisfaction and injustice. 
We made it through despite the racism and sexism. We made it through despite the corruption. We made it through with our positivity. We made it through with our outlook to the future. We made it through together. And for that, I am eternally grateful. I am eternally grateful for you to be here listening, for you to being a part of my small chat room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you the very best in 2021. I'm always here for you if you need somebody. And I want you to know that you are never, ever alone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening. I love you so much. And I'm going to continue to bring content online in hopes that it inspires, that it excites, and that it continues to make you feel a certain way. And anyway, I want to lift you up. I want to set you up for success so that we all can continue to be the best people that we are. Much love to you. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.